Welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, as fall approaches, we start thinking about combining our crops, and in some areas of the country, they're already well into this process. But for us, right about this time of year, we're worried about getting that soybean combine set just right. We'll give you some tips today on the show. We'll also talk about how to fix low pH soil and some of the other things that can get fixed at the same time you're adjusting that soil pH up. There is a certain pH you want to have in your ground, and if you're not at that kind of level, you're going to have yield loss. We'll explain later in the show. Well, the other thing you may have is certain types of weeds popping up in your field. Our Weed of the Week is a tough one to control, but we'll show you how later in the show. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about Ag PhD Radio. Well, one of the things that I really like about doing the radio show is that we answer questions live. So people can call in, you can call in anytime that you want in the afternoons between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Central to Ag PhD Radio. It's 844-44-AG-PHD. And if you have questions that have come up about what we're talking about on the television show, for example, or just things that are going on around your farm or your area or in your crops, please call us and ask us. We'd love to have your agronomy questions and when we get them you know sometimes it's not about corn or soybeans or wheat it may be about sesame or watermelons or who knows what crop but it's still really fun for us and a lot of times there are things that pertain to one crop that also help people out with other crops too so the reason why we're bringing this up today is we get a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails during the week, and it's just hard to follow up on a lot of those things. Well, we can do it pretty easily because we've got five hours during the week to talk on Ag PhD Radio. So this show is a one hour live daily call-in show. And the reason why we started doing this a little over a year ago is basically just to give you more information that's really current today on what you can do to help things in your crop. And I mean, we're not always going to have the answer to things, but Darren and I have lots of years of experience working all over the world in a variety of different crops, so hopefully we can help you out. Well, we hear all across the country, people are just clamoring for more agricultural programming. And there's a great offering now with Rural Radio, Sirius XM Channel 80, and we're really excited to be a part of that. We're seeing more farmers across the country tune in to Channel 80 uh, each day, whether it's for markets and news and weather in the mornings or for shows like ours in the afternoon. Well, once again, we just wanted to make sure you're aware that we do do a daily, every weekday radio show. It's on Sirius XM channel 80. That's the rural radio channel and it airs at 2 p.m. Central. That's 3 p.m. Eastern or noon Pacific time. We hope you tune into that each day and please give us a call. If you ever have any questions, you can also leave a message with us or if you're shy and you don't want to be on the radio, but you want to get your question answered, just call our call screeners and tell them your question and then they can feed that to us on the air. But anyway, we love taking live phone calls. We also take emails and uh, responses that we, we try to get back to people on Twitter also. But the big thing is we just wanted to make sure you know you can get your questions answered. Anything agronomy related, we'd be happy to talk to you. A lot of those questions that we've been receiving are around weed control. One of those weeds may just be our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready 2 Extend Soybeans will provide tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate and will be built on the Genuity Roundup Ready to Yield trade. See them in action at extendfollowafield.com. There's no clock on this job, just the timeless hands of intuition and effort ticking from within. An endless cadence of committed work from the passing of Mother Nature's final frost to the hanging dew at harvest. Around here, wheels are always turning and watches need no winding because success never rests. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. 
Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quick Roots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your Quick Roots today. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. We know that the future is liquid. That's how Agroculture Liquid Fertilizer creates the highest quality products on the market. Because we're committed to finding the best raw materials at the best price possible and getting them from us to you in the most sustainable, responsible ways possible. Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers, helping you grow the future. A proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burn down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. Over the next few weeks on Ag PhD, we're going to be talking a lot about soil testing for a few reasons. First of all, this year, times are going to be most likely a little bit tougher on the farm when commodity prices have come down. And let's face it, fertilizer prices haven't come down at the same rate that the commodity prices have come down. So margins are getting squeezed a little bit. And the most important thing here is to understand what your soil has already for nutrients and what you need to apply to that soil to get the most return on investment. So forget about doing the same old thing. Forget about anything that has maybe gone on in the past. Let's just focus on today and how you can maximize profits on your farm through good soil tests. Well, one of the things that we're going to look at on soil tests, or the very first thing that we'll look at, is the soil pH. It is so important, and there are quite a few reasons why. I'll give you one right now that's going to hit home this year. It's fertilizer availability. When we get our pH way out of whack, whether it's really high or really low, what happens is fertilizer isn't available in those kind of pHs. It's a chemical reaction. When we have a low pH soil, which we're gonna focus on for today's program, low pH means acidic. So if your soil is acid, all of a sudden, there are certain nutrients in your soil, like N, P, and K, that aren't going to be quite as available as they would if that soil pH was neutral. So we'll pull up a chart right here that you can see, and as that soil pH drops, you can see how yield potential drops. And what this chart is, it's from Midwest Labs, it's based on their years of research, and what they found is you lose a certain amount of yield potential just because the pH is low before your season ever even starts with anything else. If that pH is low, you've lost yield. Ideally, we'd like to see a 6.8 pH, but even if you're at 6.3, that's probably good enough. So we want to get at least to that 6.3 level in your soils. The other thing, as you're applying fertilizer this year, we hear all across the country farmers saying, man, I'm going to have to cut back on the amount of fertilizer that I can put on because I just can't afford it with where cash rent prices are and where seed prices are and so forth and with lower commodity prices. Now, when you're putting your fertilizer out there, what you really want is for all that fertilizer to be available. But what happens when we get extremely low soil pHs is you're basically wasting your fertilizer because only a portion of that is going to be available for this year's crop. What happens here is you get tie up of certain nutrients with things like aluminum or iron that are very available in low pH soils. You also have less microbial activity because Fungi, for example, don't love low soil pH. And unless you keep that soil thriving, keeping all the microbial activity going, you're not going to get maximum availability out of the nutrients you apply. Okay, just to put into perspective how important this is, when we look at a neutral pH of seven and you move down to a six pH, that six is 10 times more acidic 
than the 7. Now when you move down to a 5 pH, a 5 pH is 10 times more acidic than a 6 pH, and it's 100 times more acidic than a 7 pH. So Brian talks about all those little living things in the soil. Just think about if you made their environment 100 times more acidic than ideal, that's going to be a tough environment for anyone to survive in, especially these tiny little microbes. Here's the other problem in low pH soils. You're going to have a high amount of hydrogen. So when you run the base saturation test, on a soil test, the test that we recommend, that base saturation is going to reveal that your hydrogen is above 10 when your soil pH is below 6.3. Well, a hydrogen level above 10% is not a good thing either. Fixing both of those things can be done with one application of lime. So it happens when you add lime, calcium carbonate, to low pH soil that has excess hydrogen. The resulting products are H2O, which is water, CO2, which is carbon dioxide, and free calcium. Getting that free calcium is really important as you want to bring your soil pH up and taking that excess hydrogen away uh, is the other critical component here. So once again, we really want you to look hard at what does your soil have for pH. That should be the first thing you always look at on the soil test. That's the most important because I don't care how many other nutrients you're putting out there, they're not going to be as available. You're not going to get the best efficiency out of them unless you have that pH right. So if your pH on the soil test comes back below 6.3, what we want you to do is send a sample of your lime into the lab and let them know, hey, this is the kind of lime I've got that I can apply and they'll tell you what the efficiency of that lime is and how much of that lime you need to put on your ground to get your pH raised to at least a level of 6.3. Making sure your pH is right is incredibly important if you want top yields, but so is controlling our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? Welcome to the 30 second tour of your local poet plant. Local producers sell us tons of their grain. We grind it, mix it with water and special enzymes. The result is fermented, distilled, and dehydrated until it's 200 proof alcohol. Corn oil is extracted, and protein and nutrients are condensed, dried, and turned into animal feed. Bringing our tour to an end with high protein feed and cleaner burning high octane fuel. Visit Poet.com to learn more. The Case IH Summer Sales Event is going on now, meaning you can turn the heat into red hot savings. That's because all Farmall and Maxim Series tractors, along with our complete line of hay tools, are available with 0% financing for 60 months. But hurry, because while the Summer Sales Event is just warming up, it only lasts until September 30th, 2014. For more information, visit your local Case IH dealer or go to caseih.com slash special offers. Farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Diversity, in a word, that sums up really the best way to try and manage any of these glyphosate or any of these herbicide resistant weeds, not just glyphosate resistant weeds, is, is using a diverse set of tactics, both with herbicides and culturally to keep them off balance, uh, to keep those resistance from developing on a field. How will you secure your farm for the future? The Quasar Chopping Corn Head from Capello USA will help. Our design is focused on efficiency, longevity, and reducing harvest loss, making the Quasar the corn harvest solution to bring your farm forward. With hundreds of units ready for immediate delivery, secure your farm's future today. Do it for your farm. Do it for them. Order now. Capello USA. Italian craftsmanship. American grit. Soybean harvest hasn't started yet on our farm, but one of the things we've been looking at hard is how to set the soybean combine. We've had some issues on our farm in the past, grinding up some seed, not picking up every last seed that's down there, having some harvest loss. So we want to talk through today just some steps you can take on your farm 
to make sure that you've got this thing right. Well, first of all, with soybeans, the moisture percentage in that seed can change very quickly. You may look at a field in the morning and say, oh, it's 14% moisture. I'm going to wait a little bit and let them dry down because the elevator may start docking me after 13% moisture soybeans. And by the time you get out there at 10 or 11 o'clock later on in that morning, the soybeans are already down to 13. And by the time you really get rolling at about one o'clock in the afternoon, they may be down to 12 or 11 or even 10. Soybean moisture percentage can change so quickly. The first thing that I would say is just be prepared to get going a little bit early. You may start when your field is only 14 or 15 percent moisture. Just know that if you get a nice sunny and breezy day, that moisture percentage may drop quickly. And by the time you get into that field, it may be much lower than you think. There are a couple reasons why we want you starting early. Number one is the hidden yield loss that you can have on your farm. I know that as a farmer, you probably the last thing in the world want to do is take a dock. Okay, so I, I know that's like against your religion, but here's the thing. Well, it's like getting if, one wrong on your test. Right. You don't want to get one wrong on your test. I, I know, but here's the problem with this. Once your moisture falls below 13%, you're giving up dollars per acre. And let's take the extreme example. Let's say your soybeans get all the way down to 8% and you say, well, it's not gonna go right from 13 to eight. No, it's not. But every minute that you wait, is a minute at the end of harvest. That's what our dad always used to talk to us about. Yep, you wanna start early with anything you're doing on the farm because you gotta think about how am I gonna finish? Well, a lot of times we've got snow flying when we finish and we wanna be done just a little bit earlier so we gotta start a little bit earlier. But here's the flip side of this whole thing. We were just talking about, yep, you don't want this high moisture because you're gonna take a little dock. But the low moisture side at 8%, you gotta figure one and a half percent shrink per point of moisture. That's kind of a common shrink figure. So if I'm 5% lower than I should be at 13%, okay, 5% lower than at the point that I won't take any more dock, times 1.5% shrink, that's seven and a half percent yield loss seven and a half percent. So, I, I mean, regardless of whatever your yield is, we're talking many, many dollars per acre multiplied over your whole field. It's a tremendous amount of loss, but hey, you didn't take a dock, right? So it's what I would call hidden yield loss. And then the other side of it is, if you let the beans get a little drier, what's gonna happen out in your field? There are a lot more that are gonna pop off right at the combine or even before you get through with the combine. It's a big, big deal. So you always wanna start your harvest at a high moisture level and work your way down. Okay, you hit on something there, Brian, shatter loss. And this is something that I think really gets underestimated out in the field too. We get in such a hurry just to get rolling through the field and trying to get a lot of acres done and many times you may see a weather pattern coming down the road and say, man, I gotta get more acres done before that hits. But we're not stopping and taking a look at what's laying on the ground there. It's a lot of dollars. And this year, when you think about, hey, commodity prices are coming down, you really can't afford to leave dollars out in your field. So when yeah, we're Yeah, but looking even so, I mean, yeah, commodity prices are coming down, but we still have $10 soybeans or close to it. I mean, that's a lot of dollars per acre. It's not $4 soybeans, it's $10 an acre soybeans. And what we really want want you to do, we developed a harvest loss app a couple of years ago. So for your smartphone or your iPad, you can download this for free. Just search for Ag PhD harvest loss. When you pull up this harvest loss app, we developed this in conjunction with Case IH because they know how important it is. We know how important it is as farmers. You can punch in, hey, I've got a square here. I've got three soybeans. How many dollars per acre is that going to amount to based on you can punch in your own price. So maybe you have your soybeans contracted at a higher price level, or maybe you haven't sold any yet and you're expecting a lower price level. You can just punch that in and then you know what it's really costing you. And that's the big thing. Because when you walk through the field, you see a few soybeans, say, ah, it's not the end of the world, but it doesn't take very many soybeans. No, only, and all, all of a sudden you've lost 10, 20, $30 per acre. It only takes four soybeans per square foot to equal one bushel of yield loss per acre. What we've done on our farm, we just took some PVC tubes and made a one foot square. I've seen other farmers do it with wood where they make a one foot square. Just something really easy. You can just drop on the ground and then kind of sweep aside the rest residue and see how many soybeans are laying there. And if you're seeing four soybeans in that square, okay, I lost a bushel per acre. If I've got a thousand acres of beans and beans are worth 10 bucks, that's 10,000 bucks that I've lost. That's huge. That's huge. So make sure you're doing that. Stop a few times as you're going through, get out of the combine, check for loss and make adjustments as needed. But that's the big thing. It's stopping while you're combining. And I was already talking about, hey, the snow's flying by the time we get done harvesting. So we want to move this thing along, right? 
Well, it's really hard to stop and make those adjustments sometimes when you know you've got all these acres yet to do, but you got to do it. It's worth a lot of money to you. And that's really the biggest thing that we wanted to stress to you today. When it comes to setting the combine, every combine is going to be a little bit different, but the big thing is we want to make sure that your head's right down there on the ground as much as you can to pick up every last pod if possible, to cut those off appropriately, and to make sure that you're not getting loss out in the field. And the big thing you want to do is once you start combining a little bit, you want to get out of your combine and then go in front of the combine and check to see what's already on the ground there. Maybe back your combine up just a little bit so you can see what you're having for loss at the head, and then look behind your combine. So there are three different losses that you can look at, and depending on where that loss is coming from, then you know a little bit more what you can do. Obviously, Obviously, if the beans are already laying on the ground before you get there, you're too late out in the field. You should have been out there harvesting earlier. And sometimes, of course, Mother Nature's against us and we can't do it. But you just got to understand, hey, there's no combine setting in the world I can get when those beans are already laying on the ground. The last thing I was going to mention quick is not running so much through the returns, especially if you're a seed grower. We just want to make sure that we have good quality soybeans that are coming out the other end. And even if you aren't a seed grower, we want to, as a country, have nice soybean seed that's going to help us in the overall export market. One other thing that can make your soybeans look great is keeping the weeds out of them. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. Our weed of the week is dog fennel or mayweed chamomile. It's a close relative to one of my favorite weeds, which is pineapple weed. Now it's completely the opposite. Pineapple weed, if you grab the little seed heads when they're just starting to yellow up, you can squeeze them and they smell like pineapple. Dog fennel, stinks, Brian. I don't know any other way to put it, but it just doesn't smell good at all. Yep. Now this is a spring annual. It's not like it's that difficult to control, but it does seem to be rampant in certain areas of the country. The best thing we can suggest for you, if you're a wheat grower, this is usually where we see dog fennel, is using one of the sulfonyl ureas. I also really like husky because it not only contains buctrel, it's also got that other component in there, that HPPD component. So if you were to go with a combination of husky and something like addition, that's an SU product, boy, you're going to have lights out control on dog fennel. In crops where you can spray Roundup or Liberty, both those products will be effective at controlling dog fennel as well. Other than Roundup and Liberty, probably the best thing in corn is to use status. And in soybeans, you really like the pre metribuzin post-emerge. Unless you're in Roundup Ready soybeans, there's just nothing that's real great on dog fennel. Well, that's all time for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready. Don't think a combine fire could ever happen to you? Learn how to prevent a fire in today's Iron Talk. Combine fires happen every year. I realize that manufacturers have added many safety features and design upgrades to newer combine models, but anytime you have diesel fuel, oil, dry stocks, chaff, and a heat source, you have some risk. Nearly every farmer out there can think of a friend, relative, or neighbor who's either had a close call with a combine fire or had a total machine loss. Today we'll give you some tips on preventing a combine fire on your farm. Talk to your local implement dealer and they'll tell you from experience. Nearly every combine fire they've seen could have been prevented by taking a few minutes a day to clean your machine. Your biggest risk area is around the engine. Most fires start there, and for good reason. That's where much of the heat is generated and where chaff and debris tend to settle. Part of the reason chaff builds up around the engines is due to the presence of grease, oil, and fuel that have either leaked out or been spilled. It's wet, sticky, and together with dry chaff and crop residues is almost the perfect recipe for a fire. Preventing problems begins with a thorough cleaning. A hot water pressure wash will remove grease and oil buildup. If there are no new leaks or spills of oil, grease, or fuel, a daily blowdown with your air compressor could be sufficient to decrease your risk of combine fires. Especially during corn harvest, finding the time to do some daily cleaning is pretty tough. Just 15 minutes a day, though, is well worth your time. Plus, climbing around on your machine on a daily basis is a good idea just to look for any potential problems or upcoming maintenance items. Don't be a statistic on your farm this fall. That's it for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. 
If you watch Ag PhD TV, you'll love the new Ag PhD radio show each weekday on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. This is Darren Hefty. On the new Ag PhD radio program, we'll take live callers and provide the agronomic information and brotherly banter you've come to expect from Ag PhD. We'll feature a Back 40 segment where we talk to farmers and agronomists around the country to share what's going on with crop production. And it wouldn't be Ag PhD without addressing a pest of the day. Tune in to the Ag PhD radio show each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. Wake up. Breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with Avail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. Avail makes more pee available to your roots. Here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can mean more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with Avail. The world of farming is changing. Titan Machinery and Case IH are here to make sure you're ready. The demands on agriculture keep growing. The challenge for producers is to continue to keep pace. To be successful, you'll need equipment that can get the most out of every inch of land, innovations that help you work faster, and advice from people who know your field as well as they know your equipment. Don't get left behind. Be ready with Case IH and Titan Machinery. Better solutions. This year's projected U.S. soybean yield will lose over half a billion dollars per point in shrink. Eliminate shrink in your bin. Store grain without lowering moisture content with the AgriDry Bullseye Temperature and Moisture Controller. The Bullseye monitors air temperature and relative humidity, allowing your fans to utilize the weather's natural condition to maintain your grain at market moisture. Fan run times drastically decrease along with the cost of over drying. Eliminate shrink today. Call now. Get the most from the genetic potential in your crops, reduce plant stress, and increase yield. BioForge upregulates key genes to keep roots growing and reduce ethylene for improved plant stress tolerance. BioForge mixes well with other products for easy application with every pass through the field. BioForge, progressive grower's choice to improve root growth, reduce crop stress, and increase yield. Make every growing day count with BioForge from Stoller USA. Some prefer to invest in fields halfway around the world, in short-term solutions to long-term challenges. At Poet, we're investing in the fields we have right here at home, cultivating communities and growing the local economy, creating new local jobs while we create worldwide energy solutions, helping family farms grow even as they fuel the world, because we know that investing in a community can pay global dividends. See the world differently with Poet. Dirty work pays. That is if your dirty work includes a Soil Max Gold Digger tile plow. Soil Max tile plows feature zero deflection technology. With the only tile plow factory paired with Ag Leaders and Teleslope control system, you eliminate the need for grade calculations and lasers. So make your next investment in a Soil Max Gold Digger. Better yield, longer planning and harvest windows, better water management is all yours with Soil Max. Visit SoilMax.com. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all-new s commercial tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full-functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self-contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but for more agronomic information, please tune in to Sirius XM Channel 80, that's the Rural Radio Channel, each weekday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Central for the Ag PhD Radio Show. And don't forget to tune in to Ag PhD Television next time, where we'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. 75 to 95 percent of soil applied phosphorus may be tied up and made unavailable to plants. Farmers use organic proteins and other fertilizer innovations to ensure their crops are fed properly. For more information visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.